most multiplayer games allow their players to create accounts and log into them later. Accounts can be used to save information about a player's character, their friends list, and any number of things to personalize the experience to that player. This project will demonstrate how to create accounts and sign into them later. For added security, the authentication server is not a Unity project and is separate from the game server. Players must validate their account before they are even allowed to connect to the game server. On my screen you will find the game server in the top right, the authentication server bottom right, and I'll be simulating my player in a Unity editor. First, I'll try to log in into a made up account. I have punfish fake as the username and no account as the password. Now I will hit login. You will notice I am receiving debug messages explaining why the login failed. This is intentional to give you feedback as a developer, but you'll definitely want to omit these in release builds. Currently there are no accounts on the authentication server, so I'm going to go into my game and register a new account. I have punfish as a username and the infamous let me in as the password. I'm going to go ahead and hit register. Again you will see several debug messages and ultimately I am logged into the game when my character, this capsule, spawned. In this project, whenever you successfully register an account, you are automatically logged in. This behavior can be easily removed. I restarted the client game and am back at the register screen with the same credentials. I just want to show you that you cannot register the same username twice. After clicking register, you can see that the registration process has failed. Let's try logging in instead. First, I'm going to type in my password wrong as let me out. Naturally, the login fails. I'm going to put in the right password and try again. I was able to log in using the correct password. Passwords are of course case sensitive, usernames however are not. If you would like to get this project now, check out the description of this video. From here out, I will be explaining how to adapt this project to your own needs. There will be several important things that you should review in this project. I have them all labeled with two forward slashes followed by notes. Here I am listening on localhost using HTTP not HTTP secure. It's important that when you deploy this to your own server, you use HTTP secure so that messages involving the authentication server are transmitted securely. I'm unfortunately not able to set this up for you as there are machine specific tasks you must perform to accept HTTPS connections, such as making a certificate for HTTPS. When you do complete those tasks, all you have to do is change the HTTP here on this line to HTTPS. Whenever a new client is registered, they are saved to my database. In this project, I'm saving them in memory as well writing them to a JSON file. If you're using an actual database such as an SQL or Mongos, you will likely replace writing them to disk with saving them to your database. Just above where I save a JSON file, I also load the same JSON file when the authentication server is launched. This reads a JSON file containing the registered users and stores them in memory. Like before, if you're using a different type of database, you may skip this altogether and read right from your database. To continue on that, in the handle register client method, here I am reading from the authentication server's memory of registered users to see if the requested username is already taken. If using a different database type, you would adapt this. Just below that is where I ensure passwords meet certain requirements. Nothing fancy going on here, you'll want to change this with your own requirement. You will probably want to put requirements on the username as well, which is stored earlier in the method up here. You can of course do the requirement checks right here in the else statement. There is one last thing to point out on the authentication server code and that is the unique ID field. Unique IDs don't actually do anything in this process project, but they are saved and sent to the game server upon a successful login. As you save users to your database, you can assign them unique IDs such as their index in your database. To quickly show you where that occurs, here under validate token success, which is called when the authentication server successfully validates a login token as requested by the game server, that I attach the unique ID to the response, which is sent back to the game server. I realize this probably seems confusing, so we're going to go over to the game server next to see how it all works there. There are a few scripts which run the authentication process, but they are all fairly easy to work with. We have token authenticator, which inherits the authenticator component for mirror. This verifies authentication on the game server. And then encryption, which is used to encrypt passwords before sending them to the authentication server. Lastly, client authentication, which clients use to register and log in using the authentication server. I have this one in my scene as a mono behavior because it uses curatines. The login and register canvases also communicate with it. Let's start with encryption since it's no doubt the easiest. Like the authentication server, these scripts also have notes. The encryption class uses a Caesar cipher to encrypt passwords with a constant encryption key. This is no doubt a terrible encryption technique. I place this as an example because more than likely you'll want to use your own technique and here is where you will place it. Let's move on to the client authentication class. To register a new client, I call the register client method, passing in a username and password, and this starts a curatine. In the curatine, you can see I encrypt the password using the encryption class. This is one instance where 
you would adapt this to your own encryption method. As I talked about with the authentication server, you'll want to change this from HTTP to HTTPS. After setting up certificates on your authentication service machine, you would make that change here. Slightly down, I have logon client, which looks very similar to the registered client method. It takes a username and password, it encrypts the password, and makes a connection to the authentication server. Both the register client and logon client has response methods which indicate a success or failure. Currently these print debug, but you could use them to show message pop-ups to the player. Logon client failed can be called with a variety of failed reasons. As you can see, debug is printed and an event is dispatched with the failed reason. The event can be used to populate messages to your client or show and hide windows. The success responses also have events. Whenever you receive a success for logon client or register client, your player will also receive a token. Tokens are used to validate authentication with the game server. Notice that I am setting the token received and then connecting to the game server. This is where the token authenticator comes in. I previously mentioned that the token authenticator inherits from the network authenticator class which is a component of Mirror. I have the token authenticator script on my network manager object and it's referenced in the network manager script down here. Back in the token authenticator script, there's not really a whole lot to go over. I've modified the two message classes. Generally, these don't contain any properties. The auth request message, which is what the client sends to the game, has a string for the token. As mentioned, the token is used to validate the client's login. The client first connects to the authentication server, which upon validation will give the client a token. The client then connects to the game server, giving the game server the same token. The game server will take that token and validate it with the authentication server, which is where the game server receives additional information about the client or player such as the unique ID. And I'll show you that bit in a second. Next is the auth response message. This is what the game server sends back to the client whether authentication is successful or not. In my project when authentication fails the game server will send back a failed reason and that's where this string comes in. The only thing left to show you is what happens when the authentication server responds to a token validation request from the game server. Like everything else there is a validate token success and its counterpart validate token fail. When the token validation fails the game server will tell the client why it failed and then the client will disconnect. This can occur if the client tries to fake their token or if they try to use an expired token. When the game server receives a success message, it will grab the unique ID from the remaining string. This is the same unique ID I've been speaking of which you can use to look up additional information about the player. The game server then sends the auth response message. This is the same one sent during a failed authentication as well. Except this time it does not populate the failed reason. When the client receives this message, so long as there is no failed reason, it will proceed normally. You can change this behavior as you like. Back at validate token success, the very last bit is to call the base on server authenticated event, which will allow your game server to proceed normally, such as spawning your player. This completes the entire authentication process.